Happy New Year, my friends. Let's take a look at a Les Paul that kind of celebrates that. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're going to document the 2018 Gibson Chinese New Year Les Paul. Yeah, it's not Chinese New Year yet, but this guitar was celebrating the Year of the Dog, and it's going to be the Year of the Rabbit, so if I can't win on any front, we might as well have it for USA New Year. <laughs> but if you're not familiar with what the Chinese New Year is, is it's kind of like the Zodiac signs, kind of like what we talked about in this episode with the Zodiac Les Paul custom, where depending on what month you were born, you have a certain sign, like Sagittarius. Cancer, or any of these other ones. Whereas the Chinese New Year, also sometimes is called the Lunar New Year or the Spring Festival, is all based on the new Lunar Year, where they have like 15 days of celebration, fireworks, and at the end they have this cool little lantern festival. But this one depends on the year that you were born. So you got 12 different animals. A rat, an ox, a tiger, a rabbit, dragon, snake, a horse, there's a goat, a monkey, a rooster, a dog, and a pig. It all depends on what year you were born in. And 2018 happened to be the year of the dog, and that's when Gibson created this beast. So let's go ahead and check out this interesting guitar. Oh wow. That is quite striking in person. <laughs> they called this finish crimson, but my goodness, you really have to see it in person just to realize how much of a vibrant red that is. You got all the gold accents going on here. It's got these very interesting inlays. We have a lot to talk about when it comes to the fretboard on this one. And then we've got some interesting stuff going on here for our headstock. Okay, so to fully understand this guitar, 2018 was that last full official year of the Henry J era, because then they ended up later declaring bankruptcy, you've got new ownership coming in in 2019, and 2018 birthed some of the strangest models ever to exist. And this video right here, What on Earth is Gibson Doing in 2018, was one of my first Wyron style videos, where I wasn't actually showing a guitar that took off here on YouTube. And over the years, I've come to really appreciate the uniqueness of 2018. Even though some of these designs maybe didn't win me over at first, but now that I've had four years to marinate on it, I've started to want to hunt all these things down again. So naturally, the Year of the Dog was one of them because it has so many cool, interesting specs that most other guitars do not have. It's really similar to a 59 reissue in the fact that it is a true Les Paul standard. It just has a single ply binding around the top. It's not a custom like I kind of wish it could have been, but it's not. But we do have the historically correct mounted ABR1 bridge. It has the brass golden ring toppers only, so that means you still have a cream pickup ring. This is something Gibson liked to do at that mid-2010s era to make things look fancier than they were without actually having to craft metal pickup rings. Even check this out, we've got the tortoiseshell side markers. And it's supposed to have a long neck tenon, but we can verify all this stuff on the workbench. So even though it wasn't billed as an R9, it was just called the Chinese New Year Les Paul, it has very similar specs to one outside of the ebony fretboard. And yes, you heard me right. This actually has a real ebony fretboard. Gibson did not use ebony from 2012 through early 2019, with the explanation of they just couldn't get it because of the whole government raids that started around 2011. So to have a 2018 model that does indeed have a true ebony fretboard makes this model incredibly special because there was only a small handful of models that get that. But Gibson created 20 of these according to the spec sheets. You do see the number 25 float around online. Besides your regular serial number, they just markered what number it was out of the 20 they produced. So until we see one that exceeds number 20, I'm going to go ahead and stick with what they put on their spec sheet because I've never seen one even that high. So it's possible they didn't even make the full 20 run because these really were not that well received at first. And that's probably due to the price tag. These were $6,699 brand new. So pretty much around the same price as a brand new R9, except for it had a whole theme going on with it. And as far as the used market is concerned, I mean, if you adjust for inflation, no, these were not a good investment unless you bought one used. But the next year, the dog is 2030, so maybe, maybe then this dog will get its day. Until then, I definitely wanted one in my collection just because of how unique it is and because it's kind of got snake pit like vibes to it. Sure, it's not a relief carving, but it's a giant brass dog that we'll have to take a look at on the workbench. Then you've got these cool little inlays that tie in everything. But when I get the strings off, I'll see if a uh, Google Translate can uh, help us a little bit further. But besides just our interestingly appointed guitar, you get your regular Gibson Custom Shop case of the era, and the COA is really cool on this one. It is a straight up red booklet, but this was not part of the Gibson Crimson division. Inside here, look at this COA, isn't that fancy? You've got the same design as on your headstock over here. 
Then it reads Chinese New Year Les Paul Year of the Dog with your number and all that also written in red ink. I just love this red and gold. Absolutely beautiful. This is a very nice feeling COA. They definitely took this a step above the rest. But now the fun story of how I acquired this piece. A couple of years ago, one of these was listed on Reverb as 2018 Gibson Les Paul. So naturally I click on it and it's like, oh my goodness, it's a <laughs> year of the dog. So I make an offer on it and we just weren't able to come to terms. But about a month and a half back, I put a feeler out in one of my episodes saying, hey, if, if anybody's selling one of those cool 2018 limited edition guitars, please let me know. And somebody sent me a link to somebody who had posted this on Facebook Marketplace up in Canada. And he said if I needed help getting it, he would assist me. Me. So naturally, I'm messaging the guy trying to get the price where I want it to be, and unfortunately, I was unsuccessful. So I let the guy know, hey, thanks for letting me know, but it, it didn't end up working out. But then, but between point A and point B, that guy realized that I am who I am, and he's like, oh, you tried to buy this from me a couple of years ago. So he, he was all excited then that it's actually coming to me, and it's not just going to be flipped this time necessarily. I mean, I always give that disclosure that I can't guarantee I'm going to keep a guitar until I've seen it in person to verify its condition that I should keep it but he was just happy a video was going to be made on his old one so I helped him get that UPS label to get it imported in and thankfully it seems to have survived okay this one was bought new at Long and McQuaid and apparently they blew it out kind of cheap because it got damaged so there's a little bit of a ding right here on the binding there's a ding right here on the headstock that's kind of on the top and on the face then a pretty nasty chip up here. Then if you get it in the light just right you can actually see some finish checking stemming from the tuners None of this looks like it's structural, but it is there. So until I find a better one, I'm definitely going to keep this one around, but I wanted to get this one documented before they got too crazily expensive. They're not that crazy on the used market, but they don't show up too often. Still a very niche piece to say the least. But let's go ahead and get this one thrown on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Inside the doggy ball, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this because you're going to be surprised about some of these items. So first off, in case you didn't understand what I was saying earlier, this is a golden topper. It's basically just a brass plate that sits over top of the regular pickup ring. You could remove that if you wanted to. The only thing that holds it in place is this screw and this one. And that's just your height adjustment spring screw. Here's what the backside of the neck pickup looks like. It's a burst bucker. Then inside our neck pickup cavity, we can see the long neck tenon and all that red paint. Bridge pickup is more of the same with that same topper. And it's also a burst bucker. And here's what that cavity looks like. You can still see the buffing polishing compound in it. The readings within the circuit, 8.03 for our bridge. Neck pickup reads about the same, 8.01. Then middle for fun, 4.01. Now the spec sheet says this is a lightweight one-piece mahogany body and a two-piece maple top. This does feel like a pretty chunky guitar, but a little bit more on that here in a second. Here's what our golden ABR1 looks like on this one. It says so on the back. Then our tailpiece is our regular full weight one. All right, and now for the fun part. Even if you take your little doggy off of this, it is always going to be there. So there's a few different reasons why we might have a doggy shadow here. It's either A, when they installed it at the factory, the finish was still off gassing, and sometimes that can cause the color to be a little bit different under that. And then the other theory is the whole entire guitar could have been like displayed in a window, and then the rest of the guitar has faded, whereas this has stayed the original hue. However, since this is darker, I'm gonna guess it's probably the fact that something was screwed on it and trapped those gases. So even if you wanted to take the dog off of it, the dog is always in it. And you might see this and go, oh my goodness, how could Gibson ship it out with a giant chip? I'm gonna own up to that one. When I took it off, it was fine, but somewhere when I was dusting, I guess a, a flake came off. However, th that was not necessarily my fault. If we look at the backside of the dog, look how nice and clean all these other holes are, but the one where it chipped, you can actually see they didn't manufacture it 100% properly. So it's got a bit of a sharp barb right here, so that definitely caused the finish to do the chipping. But let's take a second to appreciate this dog. I love the artwork on this. It's very intricate without being too over the top. And I love the fact that there's actually so many screws securing it to the top, but yet it doesn't look at a place when it's on the guitar at all because they kind of incorporated the crosshead of the screws into the design. But you also have to remember, a Les Paul is a carved top instrument. They had to keep in mind while designing this, the fact that it actually had to bend. Now it doesn't have a huge bend to it, but just enough. 
but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws to attach that. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I think they were missing one like right here or right there because it does not sit 100% flush with the body, but they did a pretty good job. But I'll adjust the brightness. This finish is very prone to finish checking. You can see there's a small one right here as well as a few by the other screw holes. So unfortunately, I think that's just going to become the fate for most of these. So don't feel bad if your example has checking is what I'm saying. On top of the finished checking lines that you're seeing there if you get it in the light just right you can also see the two-piece seam line for the maple top so as the lacquer continues to sink you'll probably start to see even more of that but from a couple feet away you don't notice any of that but my goodness this pit guard threw me for such a loop. I thought for sure it was just going to be like brass plated. It would just be like a regular topper on a pit guard and they attach it using this screw like we were seeing over here. But no, this is a big old chonky brass pit guard. It is heavy, my friends. It is true metal. So to show you that, let's, let's go ahead and weigh it here. Five and a half ounces. I think a normal pick guard might weigh two. But just like the dog, they've got some fancy border etching to it, and then you got like some sort of a flower right here. It's very shiny and reflective, but I'm doing my best to show you it here. And the back has all these etching marks, so that must be a leftover artifact from when they're cutting it out or something. But it's thick. Now that I've got it put back on, you can kind of see what I mean, how the crossheads just kind of blend into the pattern. Like, if you don't know they're there from far away, they just completely disappear. So, maybe not as cool as a relief carving, but had that been a true relief carving that they would have had Bruce Kunkel do, th this would have been like a $25,000 guitar instead of $6,700. But here you can see what I'm talking about, how it sticks up just a tad in that area. So what a magnificent piece. Definitely not one for everyone. If you don't like the look of this thing, I totally understand. If I just wasn't a big quirky Les Paul collector that just happens to like animal influence things, this probably wouldn't be for me either, but it's just pretty fascinating. The fact that a few of these do exist. In fact, I really wish they would have kept doing these, you know, not cut it off at 2018, do all the other animals. Because unless it's the current year of the dog and you just want that on display for that particular year or you were born in one of these years, there's not necessarily that big of a market for this exact guitar. But if there was one of each out there, then I think that'd be fun. All right, now these inlays, what do they mean? I've heard some fan translations out there, but I wanted to go to the source. I hired a professional translator to tell us exactly what this is. You know, just in case Gibson messed up and it says something silly. So first things first, the headstock. The symbol in the middle stands for dog. Go. And then that leads us directly onto the fretboard. It's the exact same one. I mean, just imagine this in English, an inlay that says dog. The only reason this looks cool to us is because it's written in Hanzi. But our next inlay stands for year. Nian. And following that up is big slash huge is the literal translation. Da. With our next one standing for lucky. Ji. The 12th fret inlay just has 2018 on it. 2018. And then our big golden medallion here stands for blessing and or good fortune. Fu. So put that all together. It's dog year. Huge lucky. 2018, it's a blessing and a good fortune, or happy year of the dog, or good luck in the year of the dog. And I guess you could technically tie in the Gibson branding on the headstock, meaning Gibson wishes you a happy year of the dog, or good luck. Now besides just what they say, it just feels like it's made out of some sort of a perloid material, but you can see there's like a lot of hazing inside. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Maybe someone can explain that one to me further, like maybe there's some sort of a historical significance behind it. But I do kind of find it funny, if you're reading this in English as you're playing, it says, K, ho, let's go. <laughs> But here you can see some more of the whiteness in it. So if you own a Chinese New Year, Les Paul, please let me know. Does yours have the same thing? Or is this just a particularly bad inlay job? So besides this being a 2018 and having a very special ebony fretboard, what else makes this one special is the fact that we have golden fret wire here. Gibson did that on a couple of models. It really just makes it look like you have rusty frets. It's never been my favorite, but you know, it adds to the whole red and gold vibe that this thing has definitely going for it. And you know, maybe that actually isn't tortoiseshell, or perhaps they chose the tortoiseshell material that just happens to look extra, extra red instead of the dark ones that they normally go for. But those side marker inlays really stand out. 
I'm really surprised they didn't opt for a brass nut on this. That would have been awesome. But maybe a bit too much brass. But the nut measures 1.69 inches. That increases to 2.07 by the 12th. This is indeed a surprisingly chunky neck, 0.93 at the first fret neck depth, and 1.02 by the 12th. I would say that's a little bit chunkier than a 59 profile, so maybe this would more accurately be presented as like a 58 reissue. But I do want to clarify, this was not advertised as a reissue ever. It was just called Year of the Dog, Les Paul. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret, just nice and rounded. So just like the Widowed series, we've got our red Gibson logo here. It's really just a regular logo that's been sprayed over red. And then this is just some sort of like a silk screen. But then the truss rod on this one, it's one of those ones where it does have the threads sticking out, but it was set that way from the factory. You can tell because it was painted that way. You find it occasionally. It, it is what it is. And the truss rod cover is also made of brass, but it does not say anything. That ding on the headstock is rather unfortunate. You can see how it caused the lacquer to check in that area too. But if you get it in the light just right, you can actually see some other checking areas just from the stress of the tuners putting it on the headstock. You can also see some other checking in other areas like right here where there are no screws, but it is close to where this route was made. So yeah, there's some lacquer checking on this, but I think it just comes down to how fragile the lacquer is on this particular model. And there's that little chip on the headstock. Somebody definitely put this one through the ceiling trying to get it off the top rack is what I'm guessing. <laughs> Moving on to the back here, it's just all red. Get it in the light just right, you can see a couple of small impressions. There's also a couple of contaminations within the finish. I know that just looks like a speck of dust, but it's actually underneath the finish, you don't feel it at all. But overall, the worst thing I found was actually on the side, there's like an L impression mark right here from somebody's rivet in their jeans, most likely. But surprisingly, this does have thin binding in the cutaway, so that's another historic reissue spec here. But instead of a plastic jack plate, it's brass. Then as far as our control cavity, we've got bumblebees in here with Historic style 50s wiring. There's no Gibson branding on these pots. Even has the little shelf right there that they would normally put like R8 on. But the back plate's the same material as our pick guard here. Nice heavy brass at five and a half ounces. However, only the back plate is made of the plated brass. You just have your regular Gibson medallion over here. I think it would have been a nice touch had they included a brass one in here if you wanted to complete the look. But now we can move up our mahogany neck. I didn't notice anything too crazy here, except for there's an area right here that looks like a small patch of dings. But I'm betting that's actually the wood grain just sinking in like it didn't get filled. Because this does appear to be just very slightly transparent. Like you really, really gotta be looking. And even then, I'm not even sure. That might just be like some sort of a base coat that I'm seeing. But we've got a Gibson custom decal here. You can see how it's darker around it. That's just the outside of the decals. You can see those finished checking lines I was talking about earlier that are stemming from around the tuners. It just depends on the lighting situation how apparent those are. And this one's number seven, custom shop 800-204. There you can see some other of the finished checking on this side. So definitely a finish prone to finish checking, but hey, I think it presents in a really cool way. And wow, it weighs 10 pounds, 1.2 ounces. That's insane considering they're saying lightweight mahogany and all that. But I mean, we can cut them a little bit of slack. This is a really heavy pick guard. That's a really heavy back plate. But even then, at most you could cut off half a pound, but let's go ahead and hear how the dog sounds. the clean tones out of this thing nice and spanky <laughs> I 
I suppose open and bell-like would also be another good way to describe it. on some dirt. Now that we know all about the 2018 Gibson Year of the Dog Les Paul, what are my final thoughts on this? I'm really happy I was finally able to get one of these things. It was definitely not my favorite looking Les Paul at first when it was launched, but after a couple of years, it kind of grew on me. On my guitar journey, I've really fallen in love with animal influenced guitars. So having a big brass doggy right here is kind of cool in my opinion. And I'm happy that at least there's a video on the internet that tells you exactly what this stuff says. I don't know why Gibson wouldn't actually translate that for us in their webpage, but hey, 2018 was a crazy time for Gibson. Now, as far as playability and tones, yeah, this thing's on point. It's very nice. Both distorted and clean was great. I really love this neck profile. It's very similar to an R8. Nice big baseball bat. So is this one for everyone? No, and with as few of these out there as there is, I'm sure they'll become super collectible one day, but maybe today's not that day. Or maybe it is, now that people have seen it for what it is and understand it. Just look at the modern flying Vs, the most hated thing of 2018, and now they're going for crazy prices. So while this one might not be perfect condition, I'm gonna hold it back until I can safely replace it with one that might be minty. But this one's such a good player. I, I'll probably just keep it as is. Who knows, I might even have to commission Gibson to make all the other animals for the series. But anyways, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.